So we've looked at binary compounds with fixed charge metals. Now we need to look at binary compounds with variable charge metals. Remember that if it has a variable charge, it will always have a Roman numeral. So if you see something that has a Roman numeral in it, you automatically know it has a variable charge. So let's look at elements to symbols first. So let's say I have iron, and I have to tell you the charge on that, so that's a 2, and oxygen. Well, like I said, the Roman numeral tells you the charge on the preceding element, so this is going to be Fe plus 2, and oxygen, we look it up on the periodic table, and it's a minus 2. So our charges add up to zero, so this just becomes FeO. Well, now how am I going to name that? Well, we know that oxygen, like I said, has a minus two, and for this to add up to zero, iron had to have a positive two. So when you write this, it would be iron two ox. Now remember, it ends in IDE because there's only two elements. Now what if I tell you you have chromium, three, and you have chlorine. Well, we know that chromium's charge is plus three, and if we look at chlorine, its charge is minus one. Now they're both different, they're not multiples of one another, so we're just going to crisscross and get CrCl3. Now how am I going to name this? Well, if we didn't already know the charges, we know that chlorine has a minus one, minus one times three is minus three, and to add up to zero, the opposite of minus three is positive three. So this would be chromium three. Now remember, it has to end in IDE, so it's going to be chloride. Now what happens if I just give you a name and I want the formula? Before you freak out, let's try a couple and see how it goes. So if I give you iron 3 oxide, this 3 tells me that the charge on iron is a 3. So this is going to be iron plus 3. Oxide tells me it's oxygen, and the charge on oxygen is a minus 2. Remember, the IDE just tells you there are two elements that you're looking at. So my superscripts are different. They are not multiples of one another. So I'm going to crisscross to get Fe2O3. And that's it. So now why don't you try this one on your own. So we're going to have copper 2 nitride. Remember the IDE tells you it's 2. So you go figure out copper and you find its charge. You go look up nitrogen, you find its charge. They're different, they're not multiples of one another, so you're going to crisscross, zigzag, whatever floats your boat, to get Cu3N2.